Good. Nice. Glad to hear it. Yeah, we did. How's it going, Paul? Uh, it's going okay, all things considered. I'm not going to lie to you. I've had an extraction. I've had tooth extractions before. So I know what to expect, and I'm not nervous about the pain. But anytime I have to do a thing like this, I'm nervous, and that's tomorrow morning. That's in 12 hours from now. So. Oh, man. Okay. Well, I, at least, you know, like, it's it's Elden Ring Eve. So you're going to no, have Elden a lot Ring's of, like... Out because I have it on PC, and it released five hours ago on PC. Yeah, it's a, I still have to wait another 53 minutes for my Xbox version to unlock. Oh, right, um, 9 o'clock your time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, like, uh, you know, it, it's it's been staggered, but, like, the official launch date is, is the 25th. So, you know, Elden Ring Eve... Uh, mm -hmm. but it's, anyways my point was you're gonna have plenty of like recovery time and you can just play that that that's literally it i was actually making i was bitching a little bit about it uh to whoever would listen earlier because some weird stuff's going on at work today and um they asked they called they called me two hours before my shift started and asked if i could stay two hours late and i was like i mean you i told you literally just like last time we had this conversation that Thursdays are always going to be a day I cannot stay late. So we had that the discussion. The one day I have an evening thing, yeah. Yeah. It's So we had that discussion again. There's a few other more personal things that are just like weird timing and stuff. But when all is said and done and this extraction is done and I'm healing, I have all weekend to just sit and do absolutely nothing but play Elden Ring. So <laughs> that's good at least. <laughs> Um, I'll just mention John is busy preparing last minute stuff for his the Coliseum this weekend. Yeah. Um, so you know, get get excited for that happening. If he was here, I'm sure he'd be advertising the times. I don't know when it is. I know it's on Saturday at least. I don't know if it starts tomorrow or not. Do you know? Yeah, unfortunately, I have no idea. I don't remember, but I know it's this weekend. So uh, I'm sure if you're listening to this, you're probably already planning to watch the Coliseum live streams uh charity thing that john does every year yeah so yeah yeah uh, he's busy uh tonight but anyways yes elden ring holy smokes when the like reviews dropped at the earlier this week like i think i think i saw a headline that it's like the 15 15 highest reviewed like metacritic score of all time if you don't include like every port that GTA five had sure as separate yeah. entries. Um, <clears throat> it is being like universally praised, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. Um, and I can't help, but just feel so bad for gorilla and the horizon <laughs> teams. Cause this has happened twice now. Well, they had so a both... week at least this time instead of two days or whatever it was still like that's not that's not a lot right like yeah <clears throat> i mean that sucks I, I mean i just put all thought of playing horizon anytime soon out of my mind because it's like oh yeah elden ring is more important to me i'm not even gonna buy horizon until i'm done with that at least well <laughs> that's my point and i'm sure you're yeah. not the only person who did that I'm so sure there's a lot that's what of i'm saying is <laughs> Gorilla's probably like, oh, shit. Yeah. Come on, again? Because, like, I just feel so bad for them. And, like, I can't wait for, like, Horizon 3 to come out with whatever the next best game of all time is. Because, like, yeah, they, they've they done it twice. So this, it's just, it's it's so unfortunate, it's comical at this point. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. One of the most anticipated games of the last, like, three years. People have been waiting for this freaking thing to drop, and they picked the same week. Yeah, like, like what are we, like, the next one's going to be, like, like Horizon 3 is going to come out, like, really close to, like, GTA 6. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, poor guys, but anyway, um, we'll talk a bit more about Horizon a little later. I also wanted to wish you a uh, a happy Steam Deck Eve. Oh, I don't care about that. But yes, thank you. Yeah. Well, I'm plenty ton I can tell you plenty of people care about the Steam Deck. I I'll I care about the Steam Deck. Sure. Um, although I think I'm in like the second tier, so I was gonna say a lot so of people that I know personally that are even getting one aren't even getting one for a while. So <laughs> yeah, I'm, I got in the second tier uh, unfortunately, so I don't know when that'll happen. But the emails start tomorrow. Okay. For people who, who pre-ordered it yeah um, 
this is this is like a weird launch because it's like you know when you think of like a console launch there's like a date that it's out right sure whereas we don't exactly have a date that it's out we have this is the date to pre-order it and then they'll get shipped immediately and like so it's like this weird kind of moving target almost yeah there's no specific day but so I, that's why you know tomorrow's the closest thing we can kind of do to, to kind of set it in stone yeah so i don't know i'm excited for that thing it looks cool i've i've been editing video about it all week for for tomorrow's big launch celebration cool. so cool 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 anyways um <clears throat> this is the top down perspective as you can obviously tell because we're talking about video games yeah um for, for once. once it's <laughs> february 24th i'm sean booker of paul fleck and um this week in the world news sucked i just want to say that yeah, I mean, it seems like the easiest softball thing ever to be like, we don't stand with what happened, but like, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know, for sure. Shout outs to like trans people, shout outs to people in Ukraine. So, you know, I, good luck. <laughs> I hope, hope things get better. What a fucking nightmare. Eesh. Yeah. Um, just it never stops it seems but anyways uh paul what have you been playing this last week um well steam next fest is going on which is basically just a whole bunch of time demos uh as kind of a digital exhibition um so i've been just playing a whole bunch of little demos and filling my time with that until elden ring drops basically <clears throat> so i have a list of a few here that i'll just quickly talk about the first one was a little bit before this um i got a demo through i can't remember through the email for tinykin this is the pikmin like uh pc game i guess it's coming to consoles as well that's like a 3d rendered house or environment of some sort and you play a bunch of really tiny hand-drawn like 2d characters and your the whole shtick is you have a whole bunch of these tinykin that you can use to like move things around or like carry stuff for you or blow up walls if they're like the exploding ones and stuff like that um right. are you actually like throwing them <laughs> yeah, yeah. In the style yeah okay. yep that's Pikmin. Yep. yep um there's not much to say about it other than it's basically pikmin for everything that isn't just a nintendo console if you like those games there's probably something about here you like you'll like there is a lot of collecting like a collect-a-thon thing going on in here because there's different things to collect to upgrade like how long you can stay in the air like float in the air as a little bubble and do different things but um for the most part it's you go into a room like a new area or whatever but in this case because it's a house it's a room and <clears throat> you'll have kind of an objective piece t for a spaceship that you're building to get back home or something i don't know it was pretty hard to tell what's going on story-wise um <clears throat> especially from the demo so every room has kind of a piece you need and to get that piece you have to do a whole bunch of little things to kind of get up to it and grab it or whatever and that usually involves helping out the people that are or the bugs and people or whatever that are living in that area do little side quests and stuff like that and yeah it's cute it's a pretty cool little thing that's supposed to come out pretty soon i think too so i think that's pretty much done i'll also say <laughs> if you're uh if you are a pikmin fan i talked about this last year but a game came out i think it's on game it's on game pass called the wild at heart which is mm -hmm. also a pikmin clone uh, i really recommend that game so that's another avenue you can go through cool uh i played a game called elder end which is a I mean, tell me if you've heard th this before. A 2D pixel -y Metroidvania. Metroidvania. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not, I got to be honest with you. There's nothing like, there's nothing bad about it from what I played. There's nothing super crazy or special about it. So if there, if you are hurting for Metroidvanias for whatever reason, this is another one you could put in your arsenal at some point. Can't imagine anyone is hurting for Metroidvanias. I feel like you talk about a new Metroidvania every single week on this show. Right? Silt. Now this, I would almost call akin to like a Limbo-like 
if that makes sense. It is a very high contrast black and white type game where okay when i, I when i googled silt i it's a fine sand <laughs> does it have anything to do with that um maybe so you're playing so it's hard to say what you're playing because the main you're playing a scuba diver of sorts but okay, yeah i'm seeing that but yeah. maybe not because the main mechanic is you are like releasing your soul or something to take over Gross. other creatures in the environment to like do things in the environment so that you can pass through. So it's like a puzzle platformer right. without platforming because you're in water. So you're like swimming around and stuff. And it's just creepy. It just has a creepy vibe going for it the whole time. I mean, so is limbo. How, how is the swimming mechanics? Like, you know, it's underwater game that gives me a bit of hesitation. Uh, I mean, it's, yeah, it's like floating in air sort of thing. Like it doesn't have a weird, resistance or anything like that you can hold a button to move faster if you need to and the movement is fine it's more i think the swimming is just an excuse to make it so that you're not on a like on a platform platforming and you're kind of going around it like all over the screen or whatever it's totally fine and serviceable um okay. but like for example one of the first things you do is you have to get through this part that there's a cable bro blocking it or whatever and for some reason your character can't go through because it's a 2d game so you take over a piranha that's nearby so that the piranha can bite through the cable breaking it and then you can pass it's stuff like that and there's like a an area that's kind of akin to a boss fight, but the boss fight isn't you fighting it so much as you and manipulating the environment in different ways so that the boss kind of fights itself uh, or like you're taking out the boss using the environment. So it's cool. If that if you liked Limbo and you like kind of that creepy kind of puzzly atmosphere, uh, I think this might be something worth looking into at some point. Staying on with the creep factor, Daymare 1994, Sandstorm, I think, is the full... Sandcastle or something like Sandcastle that. Sandcastle is what I'm seeing. Sandcastle, yeah. This is a prequel to Daymare 1998, which was the game released by the company that was given a cease and desist when they were making a Resident Evil 2 remake because Capcom eventually made their own remake. Um, yeah, it's... Okay. I have not heard of Daymare at all. Yeah, Daymare 1998 came out a few years ago from the skeleton of uh, a Resident Evil 2 remake that they were doing in Unity or something as kind of a side project. They were given a cease and desist, and then they turned that into their own video game rather than a fan game. Uh, Daymare 1994 Sandcastle is a prequel to it, and it is pretty much, if you've played a 2D survival horror game, it is pretty much that again. A little jankier because... It's an indie game, first of all, and this is a demo of an indie game that seems like it's probably not coming out anytime soon, so there is definitely a lot of jank in it, but it's okay. It Did you, did you say it's 2D? No, it's a, it's a 3D over-the-shoulder shooter. Okay, yeah, sorry. I think you did say it was 2D. That's why I was a little confused, because oh, okay. these screenshots make it look like it's 3D. I'm curious, the 1998, the 1994, are we getting like some... like? references to like pool spot you know well like kool-aid man so from what i can see but, it's it's still kind of like a futuristic 1998 and 1994 but there was a game boy like a standard normal as a game boy on one of the like okay. laboratory desks that you're like looking around in so yeah there's stuff from 94 in there but they definitely have better tech than we did in 1994 in the like laboratory you're exploring or whatever. So okay, so no like like gene wall like chain wallets. Um, I don't think they've implemented that yet. That's probably coming at a later patch, I would assume. Okay, well, I don't even get the point of them putting the using this time period then. Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, the one that has been like kind of a real treat for me though is a game called Soldiers that has a demo and again the soldiers with a u yeah soldiers with a u um again pixely metroidvania type game but i really really like the art style like i think the pixel art is absolutely phenomenal it looks like an kind of upgraded version of square or um square games from the 90s on snes but like 
higher resolution or whatever. Yeah, kind and, of like a sort of mana I'm getting. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, more, like, definitely more just, like, standard 2D Metroidvania, but that's kind of my jam anyway, so it's fine. I like the combat more in this. It relies a lot on a parry system. It doesn't, like, allow you to just dodge through everything, so it has some fun mechanics in it, but... At the end of the day, again, like it's a Metroidvania. <laughs> so, <laughs> what what's the reasoning behind the title? What, what what soul related stuff is happening? So I don't know for sure what's going on with the story, obviously, but you are a character that is dead or in between death and life because you are visited at the very beginning by the Valkyries, and you're like supposedly helping them or something. Or, like, a Valkyrie is visiting you, and you're just like, yeah, we're all trapped in this cave, and they're like, no, you're dead. Like, the cave and killed you. This is... I think you're playing, like, an actual soul, essentially, or you're brought back or something like that. I can't really tell, storyline-wise, what's going on, but it's something to do with you being maybe a ghost <laughs> or something like that. Um, so those are kind of the main demos I wanted to highlight and talk about. Uh, the, so, But the big thing, especially for our audience that I played this week, is I played the Pokemon t uh, trading card game live beta because that's out in Canada oh, okay. currently. Oh, all right. I've never played a Pokemon trading card game like ever before. So my first Oh, match really? Like you didn't, was, you didn't play like with the cards? I didn't play with the cards. I didn't play the Game Boy game. I haven't even. That Game Boy seen... game was was really good. I haven't even seen how the game is played. So my first match was absolutely fucking terrible. <laughs> like, there's no tutorial system. There is a tutorial, but I skipped it because I want to open packs. <laughs> okay, well, so that's just oh, well, that's your fault then. I'm, well, I'm not gonna no, there is the a problem though. I skipped the tutorial, and then when I went into the options to see, okay, like let's do this tutorial now or whatever, there wasn't an option to actually view the tutorial. So if you skip it the first time, it's just gone. That's odd. Okay. Well, yeah. you did say it's a beta. Maybe they they're gonna implement that. Yeah, it must be something like that. I'm, so, so I'm curious: is this <laughs> is there any kind of like story mode to this? No, this is like much like a Hearthstone. This is their version of like Hearthstone, where it's just okay. a digital well, I mean, battler. Hearthstone, they did eventually kind of add in some single player sure. modes. Yeah, there's nothing so. like that here yet. It's very bare bones. Um, apparently, there was an old TCG. I think online it was TCGO before, but uh. This is kind of the more revamped, newer version of it that's coming out to everybody soon. They're just doing the server tests or whatever in Canada currently. Um, and you could tell because I matched against the same person three or four times in a row. And like oh, okay. as if nobody else was playing. But I was, I was playing pretty late at like four in the morning or whatever, like my normal time. So um, I don't necessarily blame that them for that. It plays fine for what it is. It's a pretty bare bones, like, this is the card game and you're facing other people. There's no intricate, like, cool separate modes or, like, what like you're saying, there's no, like, secondary things you could do. It's just, do you want to do a ranked match or a casual match? But it has all the same trappings as, like, uh, Magic the Gathering Arena or Magic Arena or Hearthstone where you can open, you can buy packs using their weird currency you can open packs and like make decks. It gives you a whole bunch of decks for free that you can just kind of start off and learn the game with. Um, none of that stuff meant anything to me because, of course, I don't know this game at all. I would say after the fourth match, I started like understanding how the game is played and it got a little bit easier to fight my way through. But then I still had the problem of I'm making pre-made decks with cards I've never seen before, so I'm having to read every single card and not just, like, knowing what some of them do, whereas people who have been playing the games will just know that, like, this card does this. So right. it's I was definitely slower. There there are timed, like, rounds or whatever. You There's a lot of time you can spend, but I still found myself 
kind of getting the warning like yo you got to do something it's been like two minutes or whatever i'm like i'm trying to read you gave me like 20 cards here (laughs) right yeah and i've never even like heard of this pokemon (laughs) where's my pikachu (laughs) there's so many pokemon i don't know (laughs) honestly i don't even know how many pokemon there are i feel like they they change it every week every week there's like a new one and then they take away two and then they add three and then they change different forms. And does that count as a new one? Sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't. There's just so many Pokemon I don't know. And there's a whole bunch. Like, I. Okay, so the way it's set up, I found kind of cool, though. It's pretty different in the way that a lot of card games are. A lot of card games are pretty much based on. Yeah. Hang on. I'm, hang on. If, could you tell. Could you, do you think now, based on your getting your ass kicked four times in a row by the sure. same guy, yeah. um, you could explain the rules? I want to hear you explain the rules of the Pokemon trading card game. And I'm, I I haven't played the trading card game since I was probably like 10. So I'm not even going to be able to like fully know if you're right, right or wrong, but I know our listeners are going to probably enjoy whatever you're about to say. Sure. Well, so I was going to start this kind of off with the preamble of (laughs) a lot of card games now are based on, Magic the Gathering and how that kind of like came up because that was one of the biggest ones in the late 80s, early 90s, and it just continued to grow. So a lot of card games, especially like Hearthstone and stuff that are direct ripoffs of it, deal with you as a like a player kind of being the center of attention. Like you basically have a health pool of some sort or whatever, and your your opponent you're putting up defenses and offenses and your opponent's kind of like controlling armies to like attack each other and whoever goes to zero first loses uh the pokemon card game is kind of like pokemon the video game where you have it's almost like you have six pokeballs like you have your team and when they're all out you're done like you lost the battle or whatever so the battles are set up in that you have like six cards or prizes or whatever that you give to the opponent um, whenever you lose a Pokemon, whenever they knock one out. And that not only is like them getting like a card or a prize for them, but it also is like your health pool, essentially. You have like six hit points, essentially. Um, And at any time, you can generally play like the the support cards or whatever there's like a back line where i think it was five cards you could play in there and usually that's where you play pokemon with like good passive abilities that you can uh kind of like essentially tap i'll use like other magic terms and stuff that you can tap every sure. like round to kind of like gain an advantage of some sort like one pokemon ability i believe was like search the top seven cards of your deck for like a basic pokemon or whatever and if there is one put it in your hand shuffle your deck so i like every turn you could basically uh scry or whatever um and so but like that's your back line on the front you always have kind of a active pokemon that is in the battle like fighting or whatever and that Pokemon has its own abilities. It has kind of how much, ever, however much damage it can do with those abilities. And you can augment it by putting items on it, by giving it buffs of some sort. Uh, but the big thing you usually want to do is just make sure that whatever Pokemon they are using at that time can't just like one shot yours. <laughs> so you're trying to like, you're doing, you're playing some cards. And doing some different abilities to switch Pokemon from your back line to your front line uh, consistently to ensure that you don't get knocked out and that you can like knock out your opponent. So what you usually what one opponent did to me is that he had just kind of like a shitter Pokemon. I can't. I think it was a Haunch Crow, and it's like <laughs> stats are kind of garbage. But its main thing it can do is that you can give it like four items. So he buffed it up so it just had like. 380 health or just some ludicrous number that I'm never going to get through. And that was just like on the front. And then he had like a Pichu or some like bullshit little like 10 health fucking rat. But that motherfucker would switch that rat out and that rat would do like 5,000 damage to me. And then he would switch it back. Like, so the idea is, is I that love the idea. Of, yeah. He's, he's playing these, 
these Pokemon one after the other where you're like, look at this fucking guy. Look at this this shitter of a Pokemon. Who even let this Pokemon be a Pokemon? Yeah. And then it's just utterly destroying you. Like, it is running circles around you. Well, it's so the most annoying thing, there's always a thing in these games where if you just have the wrong deck against the wrong deck, you're going to lose or you're going to win. There is some, like, things you can do to kind of, like, maybe even it out. But this game, it really feels like if you have a certain type of deck and they have a certain type of deck, you just might be fucked. Like, there might literally be no answer for what if you let them get set up for what they can do to you. <laughs> well, I mean, I feel like that's just you need to have the counters in mind. Like, that's that's yeah. every... It's every card game is, you know, like, hey, my, the weakness to this deck is this. So that's why I've put these cards in there to yeah. compensate for that. I will say, as you describe this, I'm starting to realize. I don't think I know how to play the Pokemon trading card game. Sure. Did they? So and I know you're not going to know the answer to this. Did they change it at some point? Because I yes, definitely, they definitely used to did. know. They definitely, I definitely used to know how to play the trading card game. And like. And like you'll know this, and, and Calgary people will know this. I went to Sentry Box on Sundays because there was yeah. the Pokemon Trading Card Game like club, and sure. it was like a serious thing where like they gave they gave out like booklets, like well made booklets where you would get stamps each time you like beat it, won a a battle, and once you won enough battles, they would give you an actual like enamel pin of the gym badges from the original series. Like I have oh, the full set. That's like, so dope. It was a real cool thing. I, like yeah. I, I, I did that as a kid, but I knew how to play it. Now you're saying like backline of Pokemon frontline. I don't remember that shit at all. Do you, are there still energy cards? Yeah. Yeah. So to do anything, you use energy, which is essentially like your mana or your lens, uh, and you play them on the Pokemon to give them energy to do whatever thing you want to do, including attacked, retreat. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, you always have a Pokemon on front, like doing the battle. And then you have a bunch of cards you can play as like support cards behind it. I don't remember the support cards at all. Okay. I so, don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. I wonder if they changed how this game is, is played. And I'm sure our audience would know, but I mean, they like probably what I'm the way I'm describing it is like how you see it on the UI, because when you're playing the game, like in person, you would have your hand, right? And then you would probably yeah. just play cards from your hand. In this, you kind of ha play the cards like down on like the field if there's certain cards or like behind the Pokemon to like have okay. your team out. To be fair, though, like I honestly don't remember how you lose. Like you're saying like the six hit points. Yeah, that doesn't sound familiar, but I can't I couldn't say in place what I'm remembering how you lose the game. So like I I, I definitely have forgotten a lot about this game. Yeah. So you always have a Pokemon in play. If that Pokemon gets knocked out, you are forced to play one of the Pokemon like that you have out up. You can pick which one, but you have to have one kind of out front. If you have no Pokemon that you're able to play, you just instant lose. But if you lose six Pokemon in the battle, you lose. Okay. As far as cool. I can tell. Are you going to keep playing? No. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, it was okay. I, I got to be real with you. It was okay because it was so different. Like, it, it was just a different yeah. take on how a card game goes. And that was kind of neat. I remember loving that Game Boy game. I played a lot of that. I don't think I ever beat it, but I played a lot of it. Fair enough. Uh, that's all I've been playing. All right, I've been playing the big release of the week, Horizon Forbidden West. Okay. Um, I'm about seven hours, I want to say, into it. Okay. I've gotten to, like, the main open world part. I, I keep hearing a lot of people kind of complaining how long it takes you to kind of get out of the first zone into the real full open world. It seems to be between, like, five and eight are the numbers I'm hearing. It took me about five to do it. And it did almost... I think I did every quest. I didn't do every little like side activity, but anything that go that falls under like the quest uh, marker I had done before I left. Okay. Um, I'm playing it on normal difficulty this time on like zero dawn when I played through it uh, last easy. month on not even on easy. I played it on story. That's like below easy. Oh, okay. I didn't realize. Um, yeah. On story mode, unless it's a boss, everything dies in pretty much one or two hits. Um, Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. It is literally just like, don't worry about the combat. 
Uh, don't worry about anything. You're here for the story. Are you frustrated playing it on normal? Because some of those things do not go down, from what I remember, like, easily at all. Um, so it, it is a little hard for me to kind of compare the difficulty of the combat because the yeah. combat was almost non-existent for me. Sure. But one thing it seems like in this one is it's a lot more focused on kind of causing like chain reactions based on the weaknesses yeah. in, in shooting it at certain parts of the of the monsters. Same so thing. Aloy can get seriously messed up yeah. if if you're not like paying attention. But if you are paying attention to like, I need to use this kind of bow on this thing. Um, then I can take it down pretty quick. But the minute I'm like not doing that and I'm just like, I'm just going to shoot you and kind of, you know, muscle my way through this fight, it's going to be a much harder fight. Yeah. And Aloy takes a lot of damage when she gets hit. Um, so like there's been a few times where I have died because I just didn't even realize I was that low on health. And one guy like smacked half my health off me. Yeah. Um, that's only happened a few times. And the checkpointing is super nice. I'm usually like right outside where the fight was. So I can just run right back in. Um, I will say this game is gorgeous. It looks so nice. I would not say it's much of a step up from when I played Zero Dawn. Sure. Keep in mind, I was playing the PS5 update of Zero Dawn. So everything was pretty gorgeous in that regard. This looks pretty identical from what I can tell. There's like more. Um, there's a bit more like depth to the textures and whatnot. And there's a lot more kind of things floating in the environment, whether it's dust or little particles. And you'll see that a lot with like light refracting off little pieces of dust. The lighting is probably the big difference in terms of how it looks. The lighting is just gorgeous. Anytime there's like a sunset or a sunrise, like everything is like glowing orange. It's a it's a really gorgeous looking game. It is a it is a game that you want to like show people like look what video games look like. At the same time, if you have a PS5, I don't see why you would not buy this game. This is like the big PS5 tentpole release right now. It would seem weird to me if you're not getting this game and you have a PS5. Sure. Um, other than that, though, it is pretty much the same game. The gameplay is like yeah. identical. There's there's some new there's a bit of new quest types and whatnot. And you have the glider. I have I barely even needed to use the glider. There hasn't really been much of a case. Unlike Breath of the Wild, like it's basically a Breath of the Wild glider. But because I can't climb on top of like whatever I want and glide around, I have yet to use the glider much at all because every sure. quest is, you know, designed along a path for me and, and whatnot. Um, I will say uh, I've done one tall neck that it that is more. Um, there's more you have to do now before when you came across a tall neck, it was just like find the cliff that got you high enough and then jump onto it. Sure. This one I had to like. I had to take out a bunch of enemies. I had to like rotate a satellite dish, climb up the satellite dish. And then from there I had to glide off of it onto the tall neck. That is the one time I have had to use the glider. Mm. Um, I think you can also use the glider as a shield. I have not done that yet. Um, and then another big difference is the skill tree. In the last one, there was kind of like four, there's three or four little kind of skill trees. They're pretty short. You could go through, and then the DLC added one more. So it was either there was five total, or there was four total. I can't quite remember. Now there's like six skill trees. You get skill points all the time, like sure, all the time, sense. all the time. Before it was like you would get one skill point when you leveled up. Now it's like you finish a quest, here's two skill points, and you leveled up. You got three skill points from that one quest. So like you didn't do side content. You get skill points in the first game from doing quests. 100 percent. I, I did i did a lot of the side content in the first one so i just i guess i'm misremembering that part yeah you get them not as often as you're saying but decently often i would say you get them a lot this time sure um, and, I, and i think part of it is there's a lot more skill trees there's like six yeah. and they have different tiers and the like amount you have to put into them and it's like well you, you can upgrade this specific skill three times and yada yada oh um, yeah yeah Okay. The nice thing kind of about that, though, is you get to really choose which aspects of Horizon you like. Like, for example, I don't care about traps at all. 
Sure. I never, I never want to use a trap. I never want to highlight their track, put a trap down and wait for it to happen. I just don't care. I don't even want to use like the trip caster and try and like wait for them to go over that. I just want to run in there and pr primarily I want to stealth it. Stealth yeah. you are, is like overpowered. It seems T like totally agreed. So I put almost all my skills into the infiltrator thing. So I have an ability that turns me invisible. Oh, that's pretty. And great. then I can run up and just stealth someone. And anytime I do stealth damage, it regenerates some of my invisibility time. Oh, um, shit. So I've just been putting tons into that stuff. And it's funny because, like, they'll still hear you. So they'll be like, wait, what's going on as I'm running right at them? And then I get a, like a one hit kill on them, um, which is pretty cool. That's dope. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I, pre I pretty much put all my skills into turning invisible and doing more damage if I'm not detected yet. So I'm just hanging out in like the bushes, shooting people with arrows, doing like a ton of damage. That makes sense because it a... felt like in the first game you had skill trees, but you're kind of unlocking what I would call almost basic skills that like you get in most video games. It's cool to hear that in this. It's like if you go this skill tree, you will kind of get like really dope at this one thing. Yeah, yeah, I'd say it's 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 more like that. The skill trees will also unlock the ability to equip equipped like better equipment in that style of play oh so like some of the like more like sniper like bows yeah you can only use them if you've unlocked the skill to use them and stuff like that sure um, okay so you have to do that as well um and i put a little bit into the combat um because a lot of the times you know i do get seen and i need to fight yeah so i put some skills in there and stuff as well but primarily i'm, I'm playing it uh stealthy because that that seems to like the way to go it's also fun i just i don't know why i really like stealthily taking out like 50 dudes one by one like some weird predator or something yeah i mean it's like assassin's creed at this point for me and i like yeah. taking doing that kind of stuff so i mean yeah this sure. is your, your it's, this is your basic open world game it's got all the open world stuff you'd expect it is very similar to the last horizon so if the last horizon did not do it for you this game will not do it for you I can't imagine it's going to bring new players in. Um, it is the same game, uh, almost to a fault. Like, I kind of wish there was a bit more that was new to it. It, it is just that game, like, again, uh, expanded a little bit, but not a ton. That's probably the only knock I would give it. Sure. Um, but yeah, it looks great. Like, it looks awesome. And now that this one is built from the ground up for PS5, the haptic controller is way more in your face than it was before. They had put a little bit of that in, but now it's like constantly doing tiny little vibrations like when you walk and stuff. So there's a lot more put onto that. Cool. Um, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm enjoying it quite a bit. I'm going to do my best to keep playing it, but like I said, Elden Ring comes out in 13, 17 minutes. So we'll see what pulls up most of my time next week. Yeah. And the last game I checked out is I was doing some co-op stuff, so I played some Monster Prom Double XL. I was wondering what Okay, that makes sense now. <laughs> I was like, what a weird yeah. thing to pull out of nowhere. Uh I will say this is not a great co-op game if you're not in the same room as the person you're playing with. Mm, Which sure. is all to say cuz I'm often like, "Hey, I need online co-op. That's that's the best, right?" And and you know, my co-op buddy's online, so that's how we do it. So I like I played with him. This game is so much reading that we just we're yeah. not we're not even talking to each other. Oh. So we're just both quietly reading the and it's like funny text like there's the the writing in Monster Problem is very funny, but it's forty five minutes of us barely talking to each other while we're both reading all of this text and making text based choices and going through the forty five minute party game. Sure. Um, so people who don't, who don't know, uh, Monster Problem is, is a party game where you are trying to date other monsters at this high school for monsters and you're trying to get on their good side and then ask them to prom at the end of the week uh it's very horny all these monsters just want to do it all the time also they also want to kill everyone all the time because they're monsters um so yeah, you'll kind sense. of do like a little quick quick little relationship quiz at the beginning like from a magazine to tell you to kind of set you on a path of like this is who you should probably go for then you can choose like where you want to spend each of your day, who you want to sit with. Structurally, it's it's like this old game um, that I'm a big fan of called the Yog. Oh yeah, um, okay. So if if you've ever played the Yog, it's very much like that. Of each day, you pick where do I want to go, and then you have a small little story based segment at that location, and that's how you kind of build your path. 
Um, it's fun. Like I said, the writing's great. Uh, I ended up playing another game uh, with my girlfriend beside each other. That was a lot more engaging because we were like laughing together and stuff and like in a shared space as opposed to online where we're yeah. both being quiet and then just laughing every now and then. And it was just it was a weird it was just weird. I, I can't really recommend online play. Maybe if you had like a whole group of people playing it as opposed to just two, it might be better. But I don't know. Oh, then you could weird. all like take a character and do voice acting together. That would actually be kind of fun. Nice and silly. I guess. Yeah, you could probably do that. This also has like a really weird setup where they want to try and like establish between rounds who will get like which order people will get to pick where they want to go. Because I guess there's some strategy of like, oh, I'm going to make sure I sit beside this person and then you can maybe like block them kind of. Oh, it's, yeah. It's not really that relevant when there's only two of you because it's like, well, I guess I'll go to my second choice. It's not a big deal. I'm I'm still doing fine. But what's weird is the game forces you to be like, all right, now everyone who's playing vocally talk to each other about who would be like the best celebrity to hang out with on an island. And you're and it's not even oh. like kind of in the game. The game just asks you and then the game asks, so who won? And then you say, oh, well, we all decided this person had the best argument, so they get to go first. Like it's it's trying to build like a social debate system outside of the game. Whereas most of the time we were just like, I don't want to do that. I'm just going to pick ran hit the random button so we can keep going with the game. Um, so you have to buy into it a little bit. I don't know. It's It's kind of a weird game. Uh, it's fine. I'm not sure if I'm going to play much more of it. You have to do like long 45 minute sessions and that's the short game. Yeah. But we'll see. How, we'll see how much I return to that game. Cool. Uh, all right. With that, let's go on to some news. Sure. I actually already pulled up this first one because I don't know anything about what it is. So I'm, I was trying to read a little bit of it. Uh, a couple of sites reported um some info about project spartacus playstation's game pass contender none of this is like confirmed um but from uh the sources here's what they're uh coming up with three tiers which we had heard about before yep from 10 to 16 dollars which is one dollar more than game pass ultimate but keep Weird. that in mind. Yeah. It goes 10, 13, 16. And I asked this question to you. Typically, if you're coming into a market as the new person, you want to undercut and have a better deal, right? Because you have to compete and if you're you, starting from behind. If you can, for sure, you at least are on par, though. You don't go par. more expensive. <laughs> so coming in more expensive, you need to be able to justify that, right? Totally. Like I feel and the fact that it's one dollar more like they couldn't eat a dollar to keep it on par. Yeah. What do you think the the thinking is there? I honestly have no idea. So I remember we were talking on the prediction show of, do you think Game Pass like increases its price? Are they kind of maybe hoping that Game Pass is going to and they'll be the underdogs when they release still? I feel like that is an incredibly poor strategy <laughs> to do that. Because if I'm Xbox, yeah. if, even if I was planning on raising the price, they see this and they go, oh, well, we're not raising the price now. So we can come out and be like, we're the best cheapest video game subscription service out there yeah anyway the the three tiers um are uh are, again this is all take it with a grain of salt playstation plus essential ten dollars will get you monthly games yeah okay. playstation plus extra thirteen dollars gets you monthly games and a game catalog, which would theoretically be the Game Pass equivalent. Sure. Yeah. PlayStation Plus Premium gets you monthly games, game catalog, streaming, classic games, and demos. So, or I guess the wording here is game trials. So it gets you PS Now. It gets you PS Now put in there. Classic games could be the backwards compatibility that uh, Sony fans have been wanting and asking for. Yeah. Game trials seems weird to me because, like, I can't imagine paying for demos. And I would assume as a developer, they want the demo to get out to as many people as they possibly can. Maybe 
this is just speculation. Maybe the game trials would be for because they're not going to be putting their first party titles in there. Maybe you get like 10 hours of The Last of Us 2. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So they kind of get you, you know, you get to wet your whistle and see if you want to keep yeah. playing more of I mean, the prestige games. Game trials are a little bit different than demos in that way, where they just give you access for a certain time. And then if you buy the game, you can just keep playing, essentially. But I don't know. Maybe why, that's what it is. Yeah. I don't know why you would lock that behind the highest tier. If anything, like I could see maybe the ten dollars to get you the first hits free sort of thing. <laughs> but. Yeah. I don't know. Like looking at this, like I I let my PlayStation Plus subscription expire a couple months ago because I wasn't playing any uh, multiplayer stuff on there for the most part. Um, I I guess I'd have to see what their game catalog is. I can't yeah. imagine it beating out Game Pass. Um. Yeah. But maybe that's the thing. Maybe Sony comes into it and they offer better deals to the third parties and stuff no longer starts appearing on Game Pass as frequently. Yeah, maybe. I, I don't know. I'm really curious what the game catalog is for the... Th because right now, what I'm seeing is you're either going to get the, like, two free game or the free game or whatever. You're going to do the baseline thing. Or you're going to pay for the big one. I don't see why you would pay for the middle one yet, but I also don't know what is included in that. So, well, I, I you know, honestly, if I was picking one, I, I might actually pick the middle one because I'm not going to care about the classic games. I probably have a lot of those older games that I would I could play if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. The game trials are probably going to, at best are going to be for these triple A games that I'm already planning on buying day one and playing. Mm hmm. And then I can't imagine I'm going to do that much streaming. I do a little bit of streaming on xCloud and I'm not sitting here like, well, if Sony was streaming, though, I'd yeah. be doing this all day. Like, so I think I would actually get that middle one. But it, it, it depends on the game catalog. And I can't imagine it being on par with Game Pass. Game Pass has had years to establish itself. I mean, maybe it'll be super surprising what's on it. <laughs> Who knows? Yep. Maybe. I guess we will see. Yeah. Uh, we had a quick update on the Steam Deck. Uh, as they as mentioned, it is going out for pre-orders uh, tomorrow. The dock, which is, they have very brief, little talked about, um, has been delayed, and they are planning to make them available in late spring. So that's the new bit of news on that. I mean, that's a bummer. It seems like if you care about a Steam Deck, you want the handheld like mobile thing anyway. So I guess it's not that big of a deal to a lot of people. Right. I'm sure a lot there are a bunch of people that are pissed, but I'm trying to I'm trying to think. I don't know what I can say about the Steam Deck, so I'm just not going to comment too much about it. <laughs> I don't want to get in so trouble. much so much information from yeah, all I, the video editing. It's like I know too yeah, much. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like I it's like I don't know how much it's I don't I know some stuff's not public, so I just won't talk about yeah. Steam Deck too much. Yeah. Um Bloomberg reported for the first time in two decades, Call of Duty is going to be skipping a year. Activision has delayed the 2023 game being made by Treyarch into the following year, 2024. Um, so this coming year is still going to be Modern Warfare 2 from Infinity mm -hmm. Ward. That's still on track. The next year's game will be getting delayed. Uh, Jason Schreier goes on to say that the decision was made completely independent of the Microsoft acquisition vanguard's uh underperformance uh spooked the Ac activision executives and there's been concern about the games cannibalizing one another coming out so frequently sure wasn't there also talk about like a new engine with warzone 2 or something like i'm sure yes. they would have they would love extra time to see what they can do with that and COVID obviously threw a wrench in a lot of shit for a lot of people. It makes sense that they would need at least a year to get I think this is great. As someone yeah. who used to be playing Assassin's Creed games yearly, yeah, and they took a year off for that, that was so wonderful. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Um, but here's the thing. like, If you're a COD fan, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of COD for you. Warzone's not going anywhere. Totally. Um, yeah. there'll be they every one of those games is a live service game so you'll get you know season eight of modern warfare 2 the following year 
Um, so there'll, there'll be plenty of new COD, but um, I'm glad to hear they're giving it a, a, a year off. That only improves the games as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Sony also came out and showed us for the first time the PlayStation VR 2. Yeah, I'm taking a look right now. Up to this point, we had seen the controllers. We had gotten pretty much every spec about it. They've talked a lot about it. We had not seen the headset yet. Mm -hmm. We had just heard a lot about the features. Um, it looks like the old headset, but kind of more rounded. And you can see on the front of it, it has the four outward facing cameras because it no longer will be requiring a camera looking at you. It has uh, outward facing uh, traction. Um, pretty much it looks like the exact same like head strap that the last one had, uh, which is good because that's from what I understand. I've only played the PlayStation VR one, but from people who have played many VR, PlayStation VR is the most comfortable headset. So I'm glad they're keeping the same headband to put it on your head. Yeah. Um, then they go on to say like, we're matching the orb design of the dual sense controller, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Cool. Um, I'm looking forward to this. I'm, I'm like, I'm ready to get back into VR in like, in like a way. And I hope they like double down on this one going forward. Um, I'm also looking forward to taking the little camera off of the top of my TV that tracks the current PlayStation VR that I don't sure. use. So, yeah. Um, no word on when that's coming out or whatever, but I would guess this year they have talked about this thing quite a bit by this point. Yeah. I don't remember if we made a prediction or not. Yeah, I don't remember either. Oh, I think we did, but I don't remember what we said. Obviously. Don't, yeah. Um, all right, this news story got sent in, which I thought it was pretty interesting. Steam is getting rid of its smallest and biggest discounts. Starting right. at the end of March, developers will and publishers will no longer be able to reduce a game's price over 90%. Or under 10%. Sure. Okay. Um, the reason behind this is a lot of developers and publishers are from, from indie to AAA studios are using the sale prices to kind of game the Steam algorithm. Yeah, there's a lot of 3% off that like just shoot up to my recommended and I look at it and I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Like... Um, you see this all the time on pretty much like every platform. I know yeah. the switch is real bad for this yeah. where if you discount a game like a ton, all of a sudden it's in the top sellers thing. Yeah. Um, and it'll stay there once the sales over uh, because it has still sold a whole bunch recently. And so devs yeah. do this all the time. So uh, putting in a few new rules, I'll run through them. Mm hmm. You can run a launch discount, but once your launch discount ends, you cannot run any other discounts for 28 days. Cool. Keep that okay. in mind for people, you know, if you're not going to get that launch discount, you're going to have to wait a bit. Don't think it's going to happen, you know, in a couple of weeks. Yeah. It's not possible to discount your product for 28 days following a price increase in any currency. Uh, discounts cannot be run within 28 days of your prior discount. With the exception of Steam wide seasonal events. Sure. So that Steam makes sense. wants to discount your game. You can do it. Sure. Discounts for seasonal sale events cannot be run within 28 days of releasing your title. Within 28 days from when your launch discount ends, or within 28 days of a price increase in any currency. Sure. Um, Putting it which, all. Which together. is obviously to prevent devs from gaming the system by releasing, knowing that there's like a winter sale coming. Yeah. Mm hmm. You may not change your price while a promotion is live now or scheduled for the future. It is not possible to discount a product by more than 90% or less than 10%. And custom discounts cannot last longer than two weeks or run for shorter than one day. Sure. Makes sense. That's a few uh, rules that Steam is going to be implementing uh, on March 28th. So if there's something you're wanting to buy that currently has one of those discounts, do it soon, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and last but not least, they announced Street Fighter VI. <sighs> yeah, they did. Uh, any, any thoughts? Uh, Ryu's there. He's looking huge. Yeah, I'm fucking pissed off because I waited four fucking days for a countdown that was half an hour late only to give me a two-second trailer. 
Uh, and I think the other guy's name is Luke or Lucas. Lucas, yeah. What I understand. Yeah, I don't really follow Street Fighter. Um, I know at some point in this trailer, apparently you can see Ryu's dick. That's what Kotaku was saying in a headline. Oh, I'm trying hell to yeah. It. <laughs> not, I'm not really seeing it. Oh, crap, I missed it again. I can, I can see the frame. I'm trying to pause it. I don't know. I mean, I guess there's kind of a bulge, but it could also just be the way the ha- the pants are hanging. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, Street Fighter 6 came out. Everyone got upset about, like, the logo. Because it looks oh. like an Adobe logo or something. Yeah. I wasn't yeah, super yeah. following this. I I feel it looks kind of more like an app on my phone that I have six notifications on. Yeah, it's definitely a notification logo. 100%. Yeah. Or it's like a like a quest marker on like a map, on like an open world map. Yeah. Yeah, that's where your home base is or whatever. Anyway, yeah. Very tiny little teaser trailer. Street Fighter 6. I mean, I, I'm not the audience this honestly the bigger thing was right before that they announced another fighting collection with a bunch of uh fighting games that haven't either been released in like a good form or haven't been for a long time and that was kind of cool the uh is it just called the fighting collection it was something really basic sounding as if they've released it before but it's a new yeah no i did hear about this i I can't remember it's uh, is it all of them i think it's all the dark stalker games it's um oh my oh actually oh sorry i thought somebody linked it but they linked something else capcom fighting collection i guess it's what it's called and is that out no that comes out in june yeah just a whole bunch of games that are coming out with a uh, rollback netcode and just some cool just a cool looking collection but yeah no i was pretty pissed off because i was waiting for like at some point the rumors mill was just like no it's 100 percent street fighter because of the timing and all that stuff and it's like okay cool let's see let's see what they give us and they didn't even like put it on any of their main stuff they put it on their fighting game twitch while like after apparently one of the worst matches in like fighting game history that was just boring to watch and some boring commentary <laughs> like everything about well, that's that just, that's just unfortunate like they couldn't yeah. like plan for how exciting the match would be sure Um, yeah i don't know they could have just like maybe done like a direct or something but yeah there wasn't much to announce even so i don't know people are saying that it's obviously using the re engine and sure it looks neat i guess Uh, we need to see kind of anything about it besides ryu and lucas yeah. All right. And with that, let's do some questions. If you would like to send a question in, it's top down perspective at gmail.com at TDP podcast on Twitter, the discord channel or John's PO box. And I will read this first one from Linebeck who writes what non RPG series or game would you want done in the HD 2D style, uh, which is the silly name that Square uh, has coined for games like Octopath Traveler. There was talk about this in the Discord, and somebody said punch out, and I was just like, that's the objectively correct answer. That would be dope. I immediately thought of, like, a beat-em-up. Okay, yeah. I feel like anything side-scrolling would probably do pretty well, so, like, a Contra-like. Um, sure, yeah. Like, so, like, if HD2D, it's, like, it's side scrolling, it's like dioramas almost. A lot of parallaxing with the background. So maybe even like some sh- some shmups do pretty oh, well yeah. there. There'd be some cool shmup stuff going on. Sure. Yeah, I, I could see that being cool. I would also love, I'm sorry they haven't done this. A shmup that is like almost yarn Yoshi style where like everything is cardboard. So like everything flying at you is like on a string. Okay. I think that would look that would be really cool. That would be cool. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Suku Suku writes, you feel a disturbance in the time stream. Nothing is immediately obvious of what changed. Eventually it comes to your attention when people talk about the multiplayer mode in Banjo... When mul- when people talk about the multiplayer mode in Banjo-Kazooie 64. <laughs> Every single video game has retroactively been given multiplayer of some sort, whether it be couch co-op versus some other form. The respective quality of the games themselves haven't changed. What game that didn't have multiplayer before could do well with this edition? 
Do we need to pick single player games and put a multiplayer mode in it? Yeah. I'm going to say we can't like make the obvious choices of like this like was obviously a multiplayer game that like just didn't release or whatever. Like I'm I'm trying to think of old style games too. Specifically because they said N64, like my mind immediately just went to N64. But I'm trying to think more NES and SNES even what could be cool. A lot of franchises that could have been cool with a multiplayer thing kind of tried one. Like Legend of Zelda eventually did like the Four Swords and they tried it out their hand in doing that type of I game mean, style. Four Swords was great. Triforce Heroes sucked. Yeah. Was that just because of the game design like problems? Um, I don't know anything about that one. I remember it being real boring. I also played through it uh, single player, which probably did not help. Yeah. But fair. I played a lot of Four Swords. Uh, growing up for sure what about i feel like marvel's guardians of the galaxy would have been cool if it was oh. co-op because you have the team there already right that is yeah that's a pretty cool answer in that regard like a mass effect it's basically just an mmo at some point <laughs> i guess i guess so yeah yeah i mean you have your crew with you there too matt that would be pretty cool i would love if you could do co-op with your with your squad yeah you should do that for the next mass effect that would be very cool yeah Uh, the Phantom Aegis writes, what's your favorite meme music? This could be because you love how it is used in memes or because it's just a song you enjoy unironically. Meme music. Oh, fuck. I, do I even know any meme music? What immediately comes to mind for me is the rock band track that Stephen Colbert put out. Um, oh, okay it's called like right behind you or, or something like that. It's all about him stalking someone. Yeah, um, you're right. I do remember that. That one, that one came to mind. Cause that one just pops up a lot. <laughs> and I've played it a lot in rock band. Cause it's like really short. So sometimes I'm just like, all right, I'll just do this one to get the set list over with. Um, so, I mean, I would have said I enjoyed that one a long time ago. Now I'm, I I'm tired of it <laughs> beyond belief, but there was a time where I thought it was pretty funny. Yeah. When you bring that up, I think of um, Still Alive and like I don't particularly love that song as it appears in Portal necessarily or that it got played out. But I like when like Jonathan Colton performs it and like it's less it's more of like this is just a song that I wrote and not like this is supposed to be a sassy computer that is saying silly things. OK, yeah, I'm I'm definitely with my feelings on that song is like if I was at something that was some kind of nerdish event or or that had, um you know, like a PAX or whatever, and that song came on, I have a feeling a lot of people would cheer for it. And I would just be like, oh, come on. No, I don't want to hear this again. Please right. don't. And then because everyone's cheering for it, it's just like, ugh. it was so overplayed. It was very overplayed. I do remember, though, when that came out, um Kotaku did a little cover version of it with all their edit, a bunch of their editors, mm -hmm. but they changed the theme to be about just like news that happened in video games that year. So like red ring of death was a, a part of the chorus and stuff like that. And okay. I remember enjoying that quite a bit. I thought that was pretty clever. Okay, cool. Uh, VGC Kenny writes street fighter as a series has its own lore, but it, but is set in an alternate version of the real world using real world, real world locations and the like from what i looked up the game takes place in the late 80s through most of the 90s i could be proven wrong the point being um would you want a street fighter that took place in the far-flung past of the street fighter world to see how similar or different it would be from ours as well as seeing what things had knock on effects on the events of street fighters we see them or do you think that for whatever reason the world isn't ready for street fighter 1887 or whatever year he plays it in okay so pokemon had pokemon arceus which is like Edo period japan or something right this is just yeah. like do you want to see that in street fighter and the answer is i don't really care as long as it's a good game <laughs> i think this is a great idea they did this with ace attorney they they, they did the great oh, yeah. ace attorney they've done a few um yeah, that's true 
And what's what makes sense about this a lot is like because it's Street Fighter, those characters like aren't typically fighting with guns or mach- like machines that wouldn't exist. Yeah. In the past, they're just using their fists and whatnot and like magic fireballs. So <laughs> you could you could have the same attacks. Yeah. In the past, because it's all like biologic, I guess, or whatever. Um, I think that'd be cool. And it's like it's everyone's ancestor is here or whatnot. And that way you could have like, if if you wanted to be like really uninspiring, you could have all the same characters, but just like an, a different, ver- like an older version of them. I was like going to say, more... isn't it just skins at that point of like the characters we already know? Exactly. That's what, that's why I said, if you want to make it like yeah. not interesting, if you want to get really uninspired, I don't think you should do that, but that's a real easy way you could do that. Yeah. Um, but I would think that would be fun, if, especially if you like tied some story elements to it. Like this is how this person got their scar or how what led down their path to like eventually being like this, yada, yada, yada. Um, and then you could also go the other way and you could do like a 2099 thing where it's all in the future. Mm-hmm. Um, and that would be fun, too. I think that's a great way as we've seen it in a few times. We just we just mentioned Pokemon and, and Ace Attorney. It's a great way to like change the setting without having to change it too much. Right. Um, so I'm all for that. Hell yeah. Uh, Boko writes, what's something you like in theory, but you probably like less in action? For example, I like roller. Co- I think roller coasters are neat, but I don't think I didn't actually enjoy them if I rode one. Oh, I mean, you could just ride a roller coaster. That's pretty easy to do. But sure, I get it. I get the question. Has this person like never rode a roller coaster? That's almost impressive. That seems point. interesting like, to me because I don't yeah, like heights should. and I don't like rides. And I've ridden a roller coaster more than like at least three times in my life. <laughs> I'm not the biggest roller coaster fan. I've gotten better as I got older. But as a kid, I really didn't like them. I do, I'm not a big yeah. scary fan ride person like the drop of doom ones no, no fuck that no, yeah yep fuck that <laughs> yeah. um or like the weird like slingshot ones like yeah, oh no. man no <laughs> part of it also though is like i know the lines for those ones are the craziest yeah true. so if i did have the opportunity like hey this one is open right now you could go on and i would do it and i would do it oh i definitely I don't know. wouldn't because it's like a once in a lifetime chance to not wait in line for like the most popular ride Oh, that's oh. that's the thing that gets you. It's not even. I want to feel the adrenaline or the rush. It's like, no. How often are you gonna be able to walk right in the front? That's the thing. It's like I'm never gonna want to wait like two hours in line for a ride that I'm scared of. But if you could just like oh. get me on it, it's like, okay, let's just. All right, let's just do. Let's just do it. Yeah, in a moment let's of like, it. all right, fine, let's do it or whatever. And if yeah. you could, yeah. 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 Yeah, standing there for like three hours and seeing other people get flung around would be like, oh, fuck this. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm at a point in my life where going to clubs sounds cool, but no, I'm kind of past that. Yeah, I don't know necessarily know that there's something I like in theory, but would probably like less in action because I just if I don't like it in action, I probably don't have a theory that I would like it. If that makes sense. Like, for example, even, actually, just an example from this podcast, a while ago there was a question like, would you go to space if you could? And you guys are like, yeah, totally. Fuck that. Yeah. No, absolutely fucking lutely <laughs> not. Like, I know what I don't like. <laughs> and so I would be pretty sure that I wouldn't like it in action either. Once in a lifetime chance, absolutely. Hell yeah. Especially if it was free, because there's no way I can afford that. <laughs> Like the prices that they're asking for totally um zering with the recent news of 3ds shop shutting down i have two related questions would you recommend someone buy one at this point and what were your favorite games for the system so this no. is interesting i just talked about this I, I don't know if it was on the show last week or whatever i had a friend who who bought a wii u yes you did talk about it on the show yeah 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 so this is this is kind of around the same thing um oh, sir go ahead you were you were talking about the yeah. 3ds I, I don't think I wouldn't recommend someone buy one now. As someone who just un or just like took their 3DS out of storage. Yeah. To download a game. Um that thing looks like a piece of shit. And it, the screen is bad. The touch screen is bad. It's so the screen is so tiny. Like it, it looks old and dated. Yeah. Um, it had its time. However, th- Unlike the Wii U, a lot there's so many incredible games on there that you cannot play elsewhere. 
Like, what are some? Because I don't have any that I could think of off the top of my head that I would be like, you need to play this. Can I include DS games or just yeah. 3DS games? Oh, yeah, sure. Why not? Include DS games. Because the 3DS can play DS games. Yeah. I don't know. Hotel Dusk, Ghost Trick, all of the Ace Attorney games, Ace Attorney Pro Professor Layton, the crossover, Meteos is great. Uh, WarioWare Touched and Gold, Rhythm Heaven, uh, Mega Mix. Okay, Rhythm Heaven, I agree. That's the first one. Elite Beat Agents. Yeah. All of these I could live without. They're I like oh, a lot these, of them. I, but... I absolutely love these games beyond. So, like, there's a reason, like, the, the DS is one of my all-time favorite systems. Mm -hmm. I love some of those games so very much. Sure. So, I think I would recommend it. Um... But try and get one of the, like, uh, updated versions. I'm using a launch one, and it looks like an old-ass piece of garbage at this point. So uh, try and get a good one. It, the, you know, the 3DS shop is shutting down. That is, But it's not shutting down for a year. You have time to buy those games, sure. and you will still be able to buy the physical versions. They're going to be harder to find. But I feel like you have a year to, like, plan ahead. You You could do it. It's doable. Yeah. I still wouldn't recommend one, but I don't. I didn't feel that there was anything I could live without or couldn't live without on them. Rhythm Heaven would be a bummer to not play again. I would say though, that's one. I mean, you can, it, Rhythm Heaven's on other platforms as well. The Wii one is fantastic. Rhythm Heaven Fever. Uh, Raster Man writes in honor of Tuesday. What's your favorite game with a with the number two on its title? Not necessarily a sequel though. I can't oh. think of very many games that have two and are not a sequel. Yeah. Oh, God. It did say not necessarily, so we can pick sequels, I guess. Yeah. Which is good. Favorite game of the sequel? I mean, Assassin's Creed 2 was a huge improvement. That was phenomenal at the time. So that's definitely up there for me. Um... Two worlds? Oh god, that is definitely not an answer I would ever give. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so I like most of the sequels, especially in the old days where some of my favorite games, I like Zelda 2 more than Zelda 1. I just like that game quite a bit. Mario 2. Like, I like a lot of sequels. I'm trying to... I think the more interesting question is thinking of games with a 2 in the title that aren't a sequel, because... Yeah. Someone in the chat just said it takes two. That's oh, a great one. That's very, very good. good. I mean, yeah. you, you also just said two worlds from the chat. That's a, that's not a sequel. Yeah. yeah. Two human. Different kind of two in the title. <laughs> oh, man. But, and it's also not a very good game. Yeah, I don't know that I would recommend that, but I didn't hate it either. So if you could get it for free, maybe. <laughs> this, is a, this is a sequel. It doesn't have two, but like Pokemon... Uh, like gold and silver or sequels. I guess this is so not the answer though, because <laughs> it doesn't have a two in the title, but everyone should just remember that those were fantastic. Yeah. Pokemon okay. black and white too, though, do have a two in the title and those were very good expansions. All right, cool. Uh, that's going to do it for questions. If you want to send in a question for next week, top down perspective at gmail.com at TDP podcast on Twitter, the discord channel or John's PO box. Yeah. What is your game or demo of the week? Uh, uh, soldiers, I guess it's a good demo. And uh, I'm obviously going to recommend horizon forbidden West. Sure. Uh, a bunch of stuff to look out for from us is right after this, we'll be going live with our Kenna Bridge of Spirits episode of TDP+. Plus. Uh, the poll has finished for March, and the game is WarioWare Gold. As and as I mentioned, I got my 3DS out and downloaded that. We did a bonus TVP episode last week all about the finale of Peacemaker, because we had to talk about those last three episodes. Yeah. And your regularly scheduled next TBP, which will be on Monday, is going to be about the Uncharted movie that we went and saw. Yes. Uh, and Paul also put together a survey uh, for our uh, Top Down Perspective uh, that we have tweeted out. We, it's in the Discord. Uh, we would just love some user feedback from you guys. So if you could take a couple minutes and answer some questions, 
uh, it would be great. So we can continue making the show how you guys like it. Yeah. And with that, we will see you guys next week to talk about Elden Ring. Yeah. Bye.